Tomb of Horror, Temple of Elemental Evil, The Under Mountain. There's always a certain module or a certain game that you always will remember. Personally, I love modules. I love uh, the, the materials that they bring. I think, the, in my opinion, the best uh, modules uh, came out during the second edition era of Dungeons & Dragons. You know, you got your maps, uh, your NPCs. I've had the pleasure of bringing with me here. Yes, Alphineas Goo at your service, sir. Yes. Alphineas Goo, yes. My real name's Kim, but yeah. we'll stay with Alphineas for a while at least. And together we're going to talk about The Darkest Dream, Chapter 1 of the Red Star Rising campaign. Um, so, tell us about this. What what can people expect when they open this box? Well, we're going to open it in a moment, are we not, sir? Oh, yes. Yes. Of course, yes. So soon you will see it. Yes, you shall see it soon. But first we shall talk about it. It has a carnival setting, which I enjoy very much. Mm -hmm. um, as I meant, I gushed about before. I love the fact... I love I love campaigns that are, are very different, and I, there's not too many campaigns that I've played. Um, maybe the closest thing I've come across is maybe Ravenloft. Well, the idea is that um, there's a carnival happening and you're being hired to protect it, but strange things are happening. Yes. And this is not Forgotten Realms, though. This is its own 5e, world. 5e, my friend. In, in our own world. 5e, but it can be plugged into your world, or it can be my world, our world, the world of Zyothane. Yes. The Darkest Dream begins with a group of young Honatars. They are called the Zatis. They are traveling folk. The Honatars travel from town to town and city to city. They're not welcome therein, because virtually every one of them has an affliction, and it's called the Blood Touch. Yes, and if you have the Blood Touch, you are not welcome in these places, for you are considered an anathema, you are considered an abomination, yes. And so we have a wonderful common flaw that has been created for our characters. Yes, and they will then be charged with running security for said carnival. And strange things will happen, my friend. Yes, interesting things, wonderful things. But may I talk about GMing before we open it for yeah. just a moment? Yeah, because this is not just a, here's an adventure and, and good luck with it. Yes. Yeah, explain, explain what was the idea behind this. So, my friends, I am Alphineas Goo, as I said earlier, and I've been running games for many years. My real name's Kim, and I really have been running games for many years, which explains all the gray hair and all that craziness. But I believe certain things about game mastering. I believe certain things that you and I discussed mm -hmm. of how we could create a more in-depth, immersive experience for our players. The problem is that to do that, as we also discussed, takes much time to... Go on the internet and find things like handouts and portraits of non-player characters, pictures of monsters, all these things that you want to bring to the table, hours and hours of preparation time. Then on top of that, sometimes you have to fill in many gaps if you purchase some kind of an adventure where there are holes and things that you have to make up and put together. Some of us enjoy that. But again, if we have real life jobs and real life families and all manners of other things going on, it can be very difficult to do so, yes? Yes. So what we have created is a box that does most of that for you. Yes, handouts, non-player characters, a tale that has not just a major plot, but many subplots, character secrets for individual characters, special items, cards, and all manner of other things that you will show in but a moment, yes? Yes. So that you as the game master can run a much more immersive game. What's great about this is that all you really need is people and dice. Yes. And preparation, though. Preparation. Yes. You must always prepare if you want to be a great game master. This is my philosophy. Not all believe this, but it is what I believe. And if you prepare, if you take the time to know this plot, the story, to know the underplots, the secret little bits that go on underneath, right? To know the non-player characters, to know the locality to know the encounters. Yes, you will run a great game. Yes. But you don't have to make it all up. You don't have to research it all. You don't have to do all that stuff. So if they prepare, yes, it will be a great game. So there's the carnival itself, but there are a couple of little side adventures, a couple of dungeons that they have a chance to explore, as well as many interesting and strange characters that they will meet during the carnival, and certain things that happen during that carnival that will hopefully enthrall them within the game are 24 marvelous hmm. pre-generated characters. You have a tremendous 
amount of artwork. Yes, sir. Uh, are these, these are maps and props? Props, yes. Okay. So all of you, I'm sure, if you have really tried to put a game together that you wanted to have some depth and immersion, have sat on the internet looking for portraits of various non-player characters, searching for some kind of an image that might give you uh, a feeling that you could hand to your players to be able to show them. We have tried to help with that. First of all, our maps. Yes. Yes. We have both a player's map and a GM's map. Now, in this case, looking at this one, it's not a big deal because the players already know where everything is at the carnival. Hmm. But if we go into some place, say, like a dungeon, and now you may share the maps with your marvelous players at the table. Now, these are also available on our website where you can get them in one inch equals five foot so that if you want to blow them up hmm. and put them into your digital board, you can do so. Let's talk about this, because this is, I think, pretty amazing, because, I mean, just separately, something like this would be, what, 20 to $30? Oh, to $30, yes, You course. know, um, uh, not, not to pick on a certain company, but a certain company, uh, you could buy like a, a smaller set of this uh, for about that much, and um, that's all you get. And this is actually amazing. The art's fantastic. There's a brief description in the back. Uh, this has almost multiple uses beyond. Of course, of course. It, truly, I mean, you could run the darkest dream, which I hope you would, because it is a marvelous tale. And if you prepare, my friends, I promise you, you will blow your players away. Yes, I promise this. Mm -hmm. But you could take it for your homebrew afterwards. You could use, look at these. I mean, seriously, Emmanuel, you love them, yes? Oh, oh yeah, marvelous. Yeah, great. Look, oh. Mm. Cray the Blade. You will find out about him. I shall hand this to you. Yes. Yeah. Look, Smedley picking his nose. Disgusting. <laughs> oh, yes. We'll find out about him. I'm going to tell you what else about this, though. I've run many games. And I learned some time ago that having an image and having a place on the back where the personage was described and having a place where I could put my own notes to remind me of what their voice perhaps was made it easier for me to run said character. So now, instead of trying to remember Tardis Sid and who he is, I have his information on the back. I've taken a note. And now when he shows up and says, I am Tardis Sid. I am a supplicant of the comedy of the Unseen Star. And I am here today, searching for a woman by the name of Jillian Venix. And if you know where she is, sir, you will tell me. Hmm. Or well, perhaps we shall not have such a polite conversation. Yes, yeah, so we bring him to the table, right? We we bring his attitude, right? We bring his melancholiness, hmm. his threatening way, yes? And it's easier for us as a game master because we know him already. Yeah. Let's talk about these cards. Oh, yes. Again, uh, and I, I mentioned this to you before, like I was sort of surprised because something like this... Um, Again, usually a lot of uh, companies sell it separately. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you have a collection of magic items. Oh yes, all of the all of the magic items, all of the special items. Even many of those are even in here that are not necessarily magical. Mm -hmm. So you actually get a, a very nice selection of these items in every one of our every one of our boxes. Again, very usable for your homebrew. Don't necessarily need to just use them in this game. You can use them again and again and again. So yes, these are these are different though. These are the GUI editions. Yes. Oh yeah, these are like the rewards yes. or or um, extra attacks, uh, advantage on attack rolls. Uh, there's I've seen cards like this, mm -hmm. like um, I could call them luck cards. Well, yes. if a player does something cool, you, reward. You get a reward. Yes. The other reason I brought them to the table is that I believe in slow leveling. The darkest dream is really one day. Mm, the entire right. adventure that's will right. take place in one day. You knew this. And I don't really think it makes sense that I would be suddenly level two or level three in one day. Yeah. Also, I like extending what I consider to be the better levels, which is sort of this second through eighth, second through ninth time frame. Because as we all know as Game Masters, this, high level campaigns can be enthralling and wonderful, but they're also very hard to run. They are very challenging because you have players with so much mmm right there, mmm, right? and you got to challenge them back with a lot more mmm of your own, right? And combats can be very long, and they can be very involved. In this. So this sort of this mid range of levels, I think, is the is the best for savoring. And so we slow them down quite a bit, 
Yeah. But it's... People like to level. They like to be rewarded for their activities. Yes, they like to be rewarded for their excellence, for things that they do. And that was the genesis of Gui Rewards. And they could even get a fate point, yes? Mm. And you know of this, Emmanuel, yes? <laughs> so they are about to go down. The ghoul is right there, and the last player is up. And he reaches up with his talent fingers, yes? And he strikes at you, yes? And he strikes you right in the neck. And it's over. But no. Game Master! I have a fate card. He misses my neck. <laughs> and there you have it. And people love that. Yes, they, they do. I mean, I know it because I see it happen when I play. Now, even though this takes place over one night, um, there's enough adventure here you can play multiple times. Oh, this is, this is uh, for a very fast group, this is 20 hours of gameplay. Hmm. For an average group, it's going to be 25, 26. And uh, if you're me, it's going to be 30. 30 hours of playtime. I tend to bring things out a little more nuancy and a little more mystery, and so there's more thinking that tends to go on at my table. So it's, it's a good value in terms of amount of time play as well. You're going to get four or five sessions at the low end and six or seven possibly at the high end, unless you're short sessions, then you get many more. So I know you explained the maps already. Yes. But you, let's talk more about the props and the other handouts yes. that you have here. Yes. So pretty much, as I told you, my friend, every clue, the handout that they find in the pocket of the dead man. Yes, every strange thing they find on a wall, perhaps. Every weird locality. Every dark hallway. Yes. Every puzzle or clue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, every strange room with purple smoke coming out of it. Yes. And on and on and on. What I want to be able to bring to, to game masters is a, is a different level of thought of how you might be able to run a game and how that game might be able to be a better game than you've been running simply because you've never seen anything like this before. But there's 50, 60 handouts and special items cards and yeah. all manner of portraits and things that people can use to make their game more deep, more interesting, more intriguing for their players. Tell us about this, uh, about the yes. reference book. So, as you can see, they're spiral bound. Yes. Now we have all lived behind a screen, unless we do digital. Yes? yes? Behind a screen, unless we do digital. And we've all had these books that are perfect bound, and we try to set them behind our screen, and they close shut on us. Or worse still, we spent 50, 60, 70 dollars on this book, it cracks the back, yes? And our pages come falling out, and it's, you, you know, oh, yeah. yes? Oh yeah, yes. I've lost a lot of books that way. It's terrible, it's heartbreaking, you spend all that money. But beyond that, we also know that a single book, you have combat stats in the back, you have the adventure in the front, you have pictures of NPCs on certain pages and all this kind of stuff. And so you now you have to either make photocopies of the book, which again breaks the back of your book, or try to go through all the rigmarole of trying to get those handouts so people can be able to look at them. You don't have to do that here, yes? You see it. But it's more than that. Because functionality is critical if you're going to be a great GM. Mm. You have to be able to do things quickly or else the table gets bored. Mm. Yes. So the adventure is structured so that every handout is shown right here. Yes. Mm. So that all the handouts are right there. So you know them. You know which they are. They're also numbered. You'll be able to pull them out. But even more than that, as you can see right here, see the little box. Yeah. That little box is a battle stack. And inside the GM reference book are all of the battle stats. Okay. And so when you are behind the screen, you set it down just like this. You have your adventure. You have your battle stat. You run the encounter. And you're done. Mm. No flipping back and forth, no looking all over the place. But it's even more than that because you know this, Emmanuel. Mm. You know that you and I and GMs all over the world have to adjust encounters. But the GM reference book has all manner of other it items and ideas and concepts. It's got um, my, one of my particular favorite things that, that I have believed for many, many years. Mm. Not so random encounters. Yes, the NSREs. Because, my friends, as you know, if you are a game master, for the most part, random encounters are stupid. Yes? Mm. You end up with the bear in the frog temple. Or you end up with... Some kind of a strange undead creature in the middle of the cloud giant's kingdom. Mm. I don't understand these things, but this is what happens. Yeah. Don't do random encounters anymore. Mm. Be done with it. Put encounters 
into the game that make sense, that are right, that are appropriate. And they don't always have to be combat, no. Mm. They can be interesting little tidbits, strange little happenings, bizarre little circumstances, or little clues. Mm. Yes, all of these things raise the energy at the table, which is why we have three kinds of NSREs. Mm. We have lethal ones, non-lethal ones, and little things we call gooey additions. Yes, which are marvelous. <laughs> yeah. Which is great to, that is your game or this module allows you such flexibility. Of course. Because like, like you said, um, you have different parties, you have different groups playing this game. Like I probably for newcomers, I would do probably the non-lethal yes. ones. Yes. Because they're not ready for that. But, but a certain game group that I played with for about 20 years, who use a little lethal. <laughs> who are a little more like Navy SEALs than they are like bumbling buffoons, yes? yes. <laughs> <laughs> or both. Or oh, both. <laughs> yes, of course, that's something. We have seen that. Yes, they are both. <laughs> some of the stuff separately would be $20, $30. Uh, and there's some really expensive modules out there. But right now, this is less than $50 right now. Correct. Right now, actually, you can go onto our website until we run out of the last printing job. And you can buy for, I believe it's $40. You can buy the physical version and get free shipping right now. Okay. At gooeycube.com? Gooeycube.com, yes. Excellent. You can buy, spend $45 and get the box and the digital version and still get free shipping. Wow. Gooeycube.com. Gooeycube.com, yes. Gooey cubes, we all like them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Let me know what you think in the comments below and have a great day. Bye-bye.